ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ان شاء الله we going to get into the 10th lecture in our series كان خلق القران his character was the quran from Sheikh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al-Badr hafizhumullahu ta'ala may Allah protect and preserve both of them and as is our ada a habit we are going to go over lecture number 9 before we begin before we begin lecture number 10 so number 1 mention the event which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes as being more difficult for him than the day of uhud and this is mentioned in hadith number 6 who can mention the event zubair yawm al aqaba yawm al aqaba what was yawm al aqaba huh wa yes it's said to be a place in taif but what was the day what was significant about this day that was more difficult than yaw- than the day of Uhud? What was significant about it, uh, Sa'id? That's another question. What was significant about that day itself? <coughs> right. That he went to Ta'if, the Prophet ﷺ went to Ta'if seeking protection seeking yani to call the people of ta'if to al-islam firstly for them to come into islam and then seeking protection yani for him to deliver the message message of al-islam okay um naam and what did they do did they accept from him huh yeah did they accept his da'wah go ahead Sa'ad. He was treated harshly. Okay, they did not accept the da'wah. They didn't accept la ilaha illallah. Okay, he was treated harshly. What else did they do to him? They kicked him out. They they threw things at him. Till blood, he bled from his legs. So on and so forth. It was a bad day for him. Naam. Number two, mention one of the events that occurred in his personal life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during this time that contributed to the weightiness of this event. Ismail, the death of who? His wife Khadija and mother of his six children and his life partner and aide and supporter Khadija radiallahu anha. She died in that year. Who else died? Hamid. His uncle who? Abu Talib. Abu Talib is his name. Abu Talib. His uncle Abu Talib. Who was in the position of what for him? Protection, but also before that, he was as like he was like his father. When his mother, when his uh, father died, his mother took him, or his mother had him, and then when his mother died, he was under his grandfather Abdul Muttalib. And then when Abdul Muttalib died, or when he was getting ready to die, he told Abu Talib to take him under your wing, basically raise him. So as a little boy, and this is from he's like twelve years old. All the way to when the Prophet Sallallahu gets to 50 years old. This man is like his father. So like 12 to 50. Even we used to go with him on trips, business trips from all the way to Sham and which is yani, present day Syria and so on and so forth. He would go with him and travel and so he was like his father. He raised him up from maybe 10, 12 years old. So he died in that year. His wife Khadija radiallahu anha, she died in that year as well. 
You know? Um, so this was very difficult for him. Naam. Number three, describe the events leading up to Allah's sending the angel of the mountains, Malik al-Jibal, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hadith 6. Now let's just go over the events that happens. Okay, what happened? Zubir. He goes to Ta'if to give them da'wah. Okay? Before that, even before he goes to Ta'if, he gives da'wah where? Mecca. He gives da'wah in Mecca for 10 years. And they refuse, many of them refuse, many of them harm him, harm his family, harm his, yani his loved ones, harm his companions. Some of his companions got killed, right? Tortured. Yani a lot of things happened, right? And then he went to Ta'if after all this. They boycotted him too. Did we mention that? They boycotted the Prophet ﷺ and his companions for three years. And this is what is said to have led up to the death of his wife, Khadija radla anha, and other companions. They boycotted them, not trading with them, not marrying from them, basically cutting them off to the point that they, some of them, they had to survive by eating the tree, the leaves of the trees. Three years of boycott in the desert. Can you imagine being, they have to, commu- they have to cooperate in the desert because it's such a harsh environment, such a harsh place to live. They boycotted them. Right? Naam. Then he went to Ta'if. Then he called him to Islam after the death of Abu Talib because he needed someone to protect him. And he wanted to call him to Islam. And he, he called him to the deen. They didn't accept. He called him to a pact. They didn't accept that. They, gave, they lied to him. They cursed him. Right? They had the uh, sufaha, the ignorant of them, and the young children get rocks and stone the Prophet of Allah وسلم, until he actually bled from his legs. Naam. And then he's walking what? In a state of um, extreme stress. He's walking in a state of extreme stress to the point that he doesn't have his mind fully there. Until he goes to a qarn al and there's over him a, a cloud. Naam. And then Jibreel says to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard what your people have said to you and he's sending... He has sent the angels of the the angel of the mountains for you to command with whatever you want. Now, discuss the offer being made to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the angel of the mountains, Malik al Jibal. What was his offer? Saad. He said, basically, whatever you want me to do. Whatever you want me to do, in to read, in shitan utbik alayhum al akhshabain. If you wish that I take both of these mountains and smash all these people and destroy them at one time, I would do it. That was the offer that was made. Now memorize the response of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to this offer to punish those who had rejected his invitation to worship Allah alone. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was given this offer by the angel of the mountains? What did he say, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Anyway, memorize in Arabic, Ismail. Naam. Bel arju and yukhrij Allahu min aslabihim min ya'abud Allah wahdahu wa la yushibu bi shay'a. Which means what? Rather, don't destroy them. Rather, what? Rather, I hope, I wish, and it's my desire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take from their loins, meaning their offspring, make them of those who worship Allah alone, without any partners, right? And don't associate any partners with Him. Yani He wished good for them. He didn't wish for them to be destroyed because they cursed Him, because they lied to Him, because they tortured His companions. He didn't want them to be destroyed. Rather, He wanted guidance for them. Naam. And we just, this is what we, this is the next question. Discuss what this event teaches us about the good character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the lesson in it for every Muslim. What, what can it, what, what, what shows about the good character and what is the lesson we can learn from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's response to taking revenge to these people? Ra'ad. It shows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's forbearance. His forbearance and is able to overlook the wrong that people have done to him. Right? It also shows what? Huh? 
He was not quick make du- to make dua against them. He wasn't quick to make dua against them. He didn't want to harm his people. Rather, he wanted guidance for his people. It also goes back to the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that the Prophet sallallahu never took revenge for himself. Rather, he only took revenge if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion was violated. But for his own self, he wouldn't take revenge. What is the lesson that we get? What do we get? What's the benefit that we get as average Muslims from this? I'm asking you. Let me know. Go ahead, Rod. Yeah. Don't always take things personal for yourself. Look at the bigger picture. It's about the da'wah. You want guidance for the people. It's not only about you. It's not only about me. It's about the da'wah. It's about guidance for the people. People are going to harm you. There's going to be harm when you're trying to do good. People, they say, I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to do good, man. Why is this happening to me? Well, this is the road of doing good. The road of doing good, there's challenges that comes with it. It's not going to be all sweet or everyone would do it. Right? The people who stay on the path of righteousness, the path of doing good, the path of helping people, they have to have tough skin. They have to be strong. Because the shaitan, he doesn't want you to do good. So he's going to send people in your direction. He's going to send people to stop you from doing that khair. He's going to send people to make you get disappointed and make you want to give up and stop when you're doing the khair. He does not want you to do khair. And unfortunately, he'll even use Muslims. He'll even use Muslims in your way to stop you from doing good. But you have to have tunnel vision and you have to, have to, see, you have to see the big picture. And it doesn't have to be a personal thing. It has to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam and his religion. Naam. Number seven, mention the opening statement of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu in hadith number eight and discuss its significance. What was his opening statement? Zubir. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahsan al-nas khuluqan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was what? The best of people in character. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best of people in character. Discuss the significance of this. Why is it significant, his statement? Zubir. Because Anas ibn Malik was his servant. He spent time with him from a young boy, right? For, almost, for maybe nine years he spent with him, serving him. And he still said, even with that, of being under him and being in the position of being commanded and being prohibited, he still said with that, that he was the best of people in character. When a person who is in this position of being a servant, rather they can, they, they, they possibly or most of the time can see the worst of a person. Right? They can see a worst, the worst of the person because they're low. That person is commanding them. They may make mistakes in their commandments. They may do things that they're not supposed to do. So the worst may come out that person who's commanding them. But still with that, he said he was the best of people in character. Discuss the behavior of the Prophet wasallam, which was being alluded to by Anas ibn Malik anhu, in the opening words of the hadith. Discuss the behavior of the Prophet wasallam. What was he speaking about? Why was he saying he's the best of people in character? Because what, what does he mention after? He used to go visit them. He used to go visit his family. Um Sulaim, Abu Talha. He would go visit them. And when he would go visit them, him being the leader, him being the general, him being the imam, him being the messenger, the prophet, he would still have time for these people. He would have time to joke with and play with his little brother, Abu Umair. He would have time to joke with him. So this is why he, would, he mentioned the statement, he's the best of people in character. <coughs> Number nine, Memorize the words of the Prophet wasallam to the younger brother of Anas ibn Malik and their significance. What did he say? Memorize. We'll memorize what he said. Anybody? Ismail, you memorize it? Ya Abu Umir ma fa'al al What does it mean? No. O oh, father of Umir. The father of Umir. What did the sparrow, what did the bird do? He was joking with him and consoling him. What is, what is the significance of these words? It shows what about the Prophet Wasallam. What does it show about the Prophet? Go ahead. That he gave time to the children and he worried about their feelings. It wasn't only about those people who were honorable, those people who had wealth, or those people who were, yani, grown and they had benefit to him. He cared about the person who was basically insignificant. 
He cared about that person's feelings. So he took the time to, he heard that the, that the child's bird died, right, that he used to play with. So he said to himself, basically, I'm paraphrasing, yeah, and he, let me console him. Let me joke with him. Let me make him laugh. Let me make him happy. And this shows his great leadership and it shows his great character. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And something that we can learn, us as inshallah, if Allah makes us leaders of, of, of communities or anybody, to take to consideration those people who no one takes to consideration. Take to consideration not only the person who can benefit you, not only the person who has some type of status, there's some people who they should not be in leadership. They walk around and they walk around with a click only. These people shouldn't be in leadership because they don't feel the real, the real needs of the people. They don't really know what's going on with the people because they, they carry themselves in like they are a special group or a special person. The Arab, they have a saying that the leader of the people is their servant. Yani, yani, say the qawmi khadimuhum. That the leader and the master of the people is the servant of the people. This is what we learn from the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will be with the people. He would sit with those people who are basically homeless. Right? He would take time with them and say that Jariya, a young slave girl, would take him by the hand and walk him all around Medina for her needs. And he would spend, he would take that time for her. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, yani, the, the, the type of thinking or the type of walk around like you're in an upper echelon because you have a position or something like this, this is not the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those people who you are quote unquote leading, they will feel this from you. When you're trying to make so much distance from yourself, they'll feel that from you and it will turn to them actually not liking you and not, not wanting to have you as their leader actually. The leader should be with the people to some, somewhat and care for them and see how can I yani, make them happy or yani, see, see their feelings and take their feelings into consideration and not carry himself like he is yani, something special. Now, let's get into today's class by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will be the ninth and the tenth hadith. The ninth and the tenth hadith. And these hadith are... First on Anas ibn Malik, or both the hadith on Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. The first hadith also speaks about a, a situation that happened with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and him as a young boy. And it shows his character with dealing with him. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحسن الناس خلقا the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was from the best of the people in manners. The Prophet of Allah or the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was of the best of the people in manners. So this is the same thing he mentioned in the other hadith. So he's given this like an introductory statement to get into why he's saying that right after. So yani this statement of Anas is like an introductory statement. Like this guy right here is the best businessman in the world. Now you're going to get into speaking about why, basically. Yani it's like an introduction or like tashweeq. Yani you're making someone yani, um, yearn for what's coming next. He's the best, he has the best character. Okay, why? You understand? Like it's pulling the listener's ears to want to know why he makes a statement like this. He said, فَأَرْسَلَنِي يَوْمًا لِحَاجِ Now he's going to say a story in regards to why he made the statement of the Prophet Wasallam having the best character or being from the best character of, of, of the people with the best characters. He said, فَأَرْسَلَنِي يَوْمًا لِحَاجِ He sent me one day to do something, to run an errand. Remember, he was his servant. And he's doing this as a young boy. And he said, فَقُلْتُ وَاللَّهِ لَا أَذْهَبُ وَفِي نَفْسِي أَنْ أَذْهَبُ لِمَا أَمْرَنِي بِهِ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ He said, وَاللَّهِ بَعَ اللَّهِ He swears by Allah. لا أذهب. He said, I won't go. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded him to do something. He's a young boy. He said, وَاللَّهِ لَا أَذْهَبُ By Allah, I will not go. But he said, وَفِي نَفْسِي أَنْ أَذْهَبُ لِمَا أَمْرَنِي بِهِ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ But in myself, I'm saying to myself, he's speaking to himself, that I'm going to go do whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has commanded me to do. But he said out his mouth, وَاللَّهِ لَا أَذْهَبُ By Allah, I won't go. Now we're going to see, maybe there's a lot of possibilities of why he would, yani, uh, say this to the Prophet of Allah when we get into the explanation. But he said, within myself, I am saying to myself, I am going to go to whatever the Prophet has commanded me to go. Now, قَالَ 
فَخَرَجْتُ حَتَّى أَمُرُّ عَلَى السِّبْيَانِ So I left out until I walk past some young boys. And at this time he is a young boy himself. Right? وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ فِي السوق. And they are playing in the marketplace. Now, I grew up playing basketball to this day. I don't even play basketball like that anymore. Anytime I walk past or drive past a basketball court, I'm watching what's going on in there. It's just natural, right? Anytime I go past a basketball court and people are playing, even if they're not playing, just go past the basketball court or if definitely if they're playing, I'm watching. Sometimes I'm in the car and I got to get back to looking at the road because I'm looking at what they're doing, how they're playing, who's nice, who can shoot, who can't shoot, who can dribble, you know, and I have the yearning to say, you know what, let me take this stove off and go play with these guys. I have the yearning and I'm a grown man. I don't even play basketball like that anymore except, yeah, I need sometimes. Now imagine uh, Anas ibn Malik, عنه, he's a young boy and he sees young boys playing in the market. So what happens? He stops whatever he's going and he stops and he sits with them or he's watching what they're doing or he's playing with them. فَإِذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَبَضَ بِقَفَايَا And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sees him and he grabs him by the back of his neck. مِنْ وَرَائِي He grabs him by the back of his neck. So he's there watching them. He's focused on them. The Prophet comes and grabs him gently on the back of his neck. فَنَظَرْتُ إِلَيْهِ وَهُوَ يَضْحَقْ And he said, and I turn around to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and what is he doing? Is he yelling at him? Is he angry? Does he have a screwed face? No, he says, and I turn and I look at him and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is not only smiling, he's laughing. He's laughing. And it's funny to him. He's laughing. And he says, فَقَالْ يَا أُنَيْسِ يَا أُنَيْسِ His name is Anas. He called him Unais here. We mentioned last class in the Arabic language. This is called Ismu Tasghir. This is called the noun of Tasghir, which is the noun of either making something smaller or putting it on a pattern to make it now a term of endearment. A term of endearment and compassion and love and mercy. So instead of saying Ya Anas, he said Ya Unais, which is Ya my dear Anas. Okay, so two things we should be seeing here that he didn't yell, he didn't scream, he laughed, right? And then he called him like my dear Anas, Ya Unais, to show him as him being Rasulullah, he's not angry with him, he's not angry with him, all right? So he gets the boy because he can frighten him, he comes to him, grabs him, yells at him, he can frighten him, like startle him. He says, Ya Unais, he smiles, he says, Ya Unais. Did you go to where I commanded you to go to yet? Giving him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he already went. Did you go to where I have commanded you? Kultu na'am. He said, yes. Ana adhabu ya Rasulullah. He said, yes, I'm going right now. O oh, Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Na'am. And we have a little bit extra in the hadith that I'm going to mention right now. It's not in our book. قَالَ أَنِسْ وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ خَدَمْتُهُ تِسْعَ سِنِينَ He said, by Allah, I served the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم nine whole years. Nine years. مَا عَلِمْتُهُ قَالَ لِي شَيْءٍ صَنَعْتُهُ لِمَا فَعَلْتَ He said, I do not remember or recall or know any time I did something and he scolded me and said, why did you do this and why did you do that? I served for nine years. I don't remember one time he said to me, why did you do, if I, something I did, why did you do that? وَلَا لِشَيْءٍ تَرَكْتُهُ هَلًّا فَعَلْتَ كَذَا وَكَذَا Nor for anything I left off, I left off, why didn't you do this? You should have did this, you should have did that. Naam. Now let's get into the sharh explanation of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رحيما بالناس. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was merciful to the people. And Allah يعني describes him as being merciful in the Quran in Surah Tauba. He says بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم. With the believers he is kind and he is merciful. وكان يحب الأطفال يلاطفهم ليعلمهم ما ينفعهم من أمور الدين بقوله وفعله. And he used to love the children. And he used to be kind with the children and gentle with the children. Why? 
لِيُعَلِّمُهُمْ مَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ So he can teach them that which will benefit them from their religion with speech and action. Why was the Prophet ﷺ kind with the children? Because this is the way to the children's hearts. The way to the children's hearts so you can teach them and they can follow you is with kindness and gentleness. With kindness and gentleness. This is how you will get to the child's heart with the intention of teaching them their religion. With the intention of teaching them their religion. Being harsh and being tough and being rough, this will not enter their heart. Rather, it would make them want to get away, get away from you in the nearest opportunity. So those who have used toughness and roughness, you might get the kids or the children for a period of time. But the opportunity they, can, they get for them to run away, they're going to run away. We're not saying here that the Prophet ﷺ let the, let the kids do whatever they want. But saying this was the way of the Prophet ﷺ, that he used kindness and he was the most wise. He used kindness and gentleness to get to their hearts, to benefit them and teach them their religion. وفي هذا الحديث يروي أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان من أحسن الناس خلقا وعشرة. In this hadith, Anas ibn Malik it shows, he says that the Prophet ﷺ was the best of people in character. And the best of people, or the, the, the best of living amongst the people. Yani how to live with the people. He was the best of them Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And khuluq in manners is religion and character, as we mentioned. Yani it's religion and character. As we mentioned the ayah in Surah Al-Qalam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And surely you are upon a great, lofty character. We mentioned that Ibn Kathir, he said that Ibn Abbas, رضي الله عنهما, he said that a deen or خلق عظيم means what? Deen عظيم. It means you are upon a great religion. So al-khuluq, it is not only just manners with the people, rather it's akhlaq or manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obeying his commandments and staying away from his prohibitions. ومن سوري والدلائل هذا الخلق الحسن أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسله يوم الحاجة وأمره أن يقضيها له فحلف أنس بالله ألا يذهب. And what shows the great character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is that he commanded Anas one day to go do something or run an errand, and Anas swore to not do it. لكنه قرر في قلبي أن يذهب لما أمره به صلى الله عليه وسلم. But he Decided in his heart to go do whatever the Prophet ﷺ commanded to do, yani because he commanded him. And it says here in the Sharh, وَلَعَلَّهُ وَلَعَلَّ أَنَسًا حَلَفَ أَلَّا يَذْهَبْ لَأَنَّهُ كَانَ صَغِيرًا لَا يُدْرُكْ Maybe he swore to not go because he was young and didn't think he can do it. Maybe that's a possibility. Yani it's not clear, but he's saying maybe it's a possibility he swore he won't do it because he was young and didn't think he could do it. Oh. He did it muda'abatan. Yani playing with the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like how young people play with adults. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he understood that. That's why there was no back and forth here. Yani maybe he was just playing, Wallahi I won't go. Playing, joking around. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understood that. فَخَرَجَ أَنَسْ مِنْ عِنْدِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قصد الذهاب لقضاء أمر النبي حتى مر وهو في طريقه على السبيان وهم يلعبون في السوق and then he went out Anas رضي الله عنه to do the affair that he was commanded with until he saw some youth in the marketplace playing فوقف عندهم إما للعب وإما للتفرج so he went with them either to play with them or to watch them وإذا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم then the Prophet ﷺ, he came, فَأَمْسَكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَمْ بِقَفَى أَنِسْ And he grabbed by the back of the neck of Anas, وَهُوَ يَضْحَقْ وَلَمْ يَغْضَبْ And he is laughing, and he did not become angry. And he said, يَا أُنَيْسْ We mentioned يَا أُنَيْسْ is تَصْغِيرْ is اسم تَصْغِيرْ to show his shafaqa, show his compassion for the Prophet ﷺ, Anas and his mercy. And he asked him, أَذَهَبْتَ إِلَى الْمَكَانَ الَّذِي أَمَرْتُكَ بِالْذَهَبْ إِلَيْهِ Did you go to the place I command you with? فَأَجَابَ أَنَسْ نَعَمْ And he said, yes. أنا أذهب الآن. I will go now. Why did he say, yes, I will go? The shirh says, وَهَذَا بِنَاءً عَلَىٰ أَنْهُ شَرْعَ فِي الْذَهَابِ وَسَيُكْمِلُهُ He said, yes, meaning he started going. He didn't go and complete it, 
Rather, yes, he started or began going and he will complete it. وَلَمْ يُؤَنِّبْهُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not blame him. وَهَذَا كُلُّهُ مِنْ مُقْضَضَى خُلُقِهِ الْكَرِيمُ وَحِلْمِ الْعَظِيمُ And it's important right here. Sometimes when we're in leadership over people, blaming is not the best thing to do. Especially if you have a great high position in front of them. You're someone great in front of them. Blaming is not always the thing to do. Sometimes you can crush their hearts. Sometimes you can crush their spirits. Sometimes you could break them down. And actually what you wanted to come out of it from positivity will actually turn to negativity. So sometimes it's better to get your point across without blaming. And the person who constantly blames and blames and blames, like I said, it may break that person down. It may break that person down, lower their self-esteem, right? Yeah, and it make them have a lack of confidence. Maybe it may push that person away from the person who is doing the blaming, right? Maybe it made the person feel they're not good enough and they can't achieve. What we should be doing is having wisdom when we have to let people know that they're doing something wrong. We should have wisdom in it and try to do it in the best manner possible. Not to break the feelings of that person, not to hurt that person's heart or not to destroy the relationship between you and that individual. No, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy when you're in a position of leadership, whether it be with your children, whether it be in a workplace, whether it be in the school, anywhere it may be. Be very careful when you, when a person, when you have to blame somebody. Be very careful with, with that. Right? As I mentioned, it may become, the outcome may be more negative than positive. Yani? So it's very important. So the Prophet said, he got what he wanted without what? Crushing Anas. He could have crushed him. He got what he wanted by him going to the place and doing what he had to do without crushing his spirit. And he still showed great character and great manners with Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. وفي الحديث حسن خلق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وتواضعه الجم this hadith it shows the great character of the Prophet of Allah صلى and his great humility the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was humble and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من تواضع لله رفعه الله ever is humble and shows humility for Allah Allah will raise him and elevate him نعم and this hadith also shows the excellence of Anas رضي الله عنه next hadith إن شاء الله this hadith is also on Anas radiallahu anhu and it is found in the Sahih Muslim and it's authentic hadith. Anas said, مَا سُئِلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَّ إِسْلَامِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا عَطَاهُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or the Messenger, he was not asked about anything. He was not asked for anything as far as wealth. In regards to Islam, meaning in regards to the Islam of the person who's asking, right? Somebody comes to ask for wealth, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam feels that if this person gets this wealth, this will be a means of that person coming into Islam if they're not Muslim, or if they're a new Muslim, strengthening their Islam. In regards to this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not asked anything except he gave it, except that he gave it. And then, okay, he now is saying a story again. So we see the uslub or the style of Anis radiallahu anhu in narrating about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character. He makes a statement then comes with a proof for his statement. And this is a great uslub or style of speaking. So now he says after saying the Prophet sallallahu was not asked in regards to the Islam of, of, of a person, anything except he gave it. قال فجاءه رجل فاعطاه غنما بين جبلين. So a man came to him and he said it was an Arabi, which was a Bedouin man who wasn't Muslim at this time. And he asked him, he asked him for something. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم gave him sheep. He gave him so much sheep that it filled between two the the two mountains. He gave him so much sheep. It filled between two mountains. Yeah, he gave him a whole valley of sheep. This man asked, he gave him a whole lot. So he went back to his people. What did, after getting all this wealth from the Prophet of Allah, he went back to his people. He said, Oh my people. He went back to his people, returned as a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he got this great amount of sadaqah 
on the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he went back to his people and he said, Ya qawmi, O oh my people, aslimu, become Muslim. Enter in Islam, enter into Islam, become Muslim. Why? فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدَ يُؤْتِ عَطَاءً لَا يَكْشَ الْفَاقَ فَشُولِ Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He gives like the person who is not afraid of poverty. He gives like the one who is not afraid of prophet, poverty. This shows that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is a true prophet. It's a sign of his true prophecy, like he's really a prophet. He gives like the one who is not afraid of poverty. Only a prophet is going to give like this. So he comes into Islam and he goes to his people and he calls them to Al-Islam. And they come into Islam as well. So this was a tactic of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And tying the people's hearts to Al-Islam, he will give them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will give the people in the hope of them to have their hearts soft into the deen and come into Al-Islam. And let's go over the sharh of this hadith bin Allah Ta'ala. كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أحسن الناس خلقا The Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم He was the best of people in manners وأجودهم وأكرمهم And he was the most generous of the people. And this is a statement of Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما He said كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس the Prophet of Allah وسلم, he was the most generous of all the people. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدُ مَا يَقُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ هِنَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلِ And the most generous he will be will be in Ramadan when Jibril will meet him. فَيُدَارِسُهُ الْقُرْآنِ And they will study the Qur'an. He will go over the Qur'an with Jibril. وَلَرَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ هِنَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلُ أَجْوَدُ بِالْخَيْرِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْمُرْسَلَةِ And when Jibreel will meet him, and they will go over the study of the Qur'an, he said, Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما, that he will be more generous than the flowing wind. And the flowing wind, it touches what? Everything with his khair. The flowing wind touches everything with his khair. This is the similitude of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's generosity. Naam. وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يؤلف القلوب بالعطايا لمن في إسلامهم ضعف حتى يرغبهم في الإسلام. And the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to tie the people's hearts. He used to tie the people's hearts to Islam by giving them things. He used to tie the people's hearts to, the, to Islam by giving them from wealth. Those who had weakness in their deen حتى يرغبهم to encourage them. To encourage them in Islam. So this was a tactic of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So us as Muslims, wealth is not a bad thing. Wealth is a good thing. Us having wealth, not to just be rich, not to live lavish. Having wealth to be able to aid mankind. Having wealth to be free of the need of the people. Having wealth so we can make our own decisions and not be under the commandment of other people. Having wealth so we can give to the people. We should be giving Right? We shouldn't be us always taking, worry about always taking. We should be giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of this being a means of encouraging people to Islam. Look how the Muslims give. Even the Muslims are in need of the Muslims who are in charge of masajid, in charge of Islamic organizations to give to them. That will increase them in iman as well. Right? Look at our people. They're good people. I'm not going anywhere. This is tabat for the Muslim. Right? It keeps the Muslim firm by the Muslims who are in charge or have yani organizations as I mentioned. Yani giving to the Muslims is tabat, it's affirmation for their deen, they're not going to go nowhere. And also for those who are not Muslim to come into an Islam. وفي هذا الحديث يروي أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قيل إنه أحد الأعراب ويقال إنه صفوان ابن أمية قبل أن يسلم and he said this hadith on Anas ibn Malik anhu, that a man, yani is one of the Bedouins, and he said that his name is Safwan ibn Umayyah, yani before he became a Muslim, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani he, he requested from him ghanaman kathira. He requested from him a whole lot of ghanam, a whole lot of sheep, that which is between yani two mountains, a whole amount. And this man, he asked for this wealth, tama'an, Yani he, he wanted it. Yani he desired it. He didn't desire, he didn't ask for it because he wanted to become a Muslim. He desired because he wanted the wealth. 
فَعَطَاهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ مَطْلُوبُهُ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم gave him what he requested. وَإِنَّمَا عَطَاهُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ هَذَا الْمَالِ لِمَا يَرْجُوهُ مِنْ غَيْرِ لِهَذَا الرَّجُلِ وَلِمَنْ وَرَأَهُ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم gave this man this wealth from what he wished or desired from goodness from this man, for this man to come into Islam and whoever he's connected to, to come into Islam. Right? For him to come into Islam and for anyone else to come into Islam. We should, as Muslims should be doing humanitarian work. We should be doing humanitarian work. We should be the number one people who are out here feeding the food. We should be helping the poor. We should be yani, helping the people that are in need. We've lost our direction, my brothers and sisters in the deen. We've lost our direction. We are worried about the wrong things. We are seriously, our GPS is off the track is off the straight path. We are worried about frivolous things that we are not doing the work that we should be doing, calling to Al-Islam, aiding the creation, bringing the front runners and helping and giving. This is how we're going to spread the deen. It's not just us sitting in one masjid and thinking that everything is just supposed to be done in these four walls. What is this? This is ignorance. This is not, this is not correct. This is not the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. We're supposed to be here. Yes, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Congregate and then go out. Go out. Go out to the Muslims. Go out to the non-Muslims. Spread the correct Islam. Spread khair. Spread wealth. Spread food. Give help. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We shouldn't have this yani, sectarian mind state that we sit in one place. This is not Islam. Naam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went to the Arab. He sent his companions all through the Arabian Peninsula. He sent his companions to Northern Africa. Sent them to Sham. Sent them all over. That's how Islam spread. Naam. Aywa, this is the deen, my brothers, in, in Islam. You should not have a closed mind. You should not have, yani, this, 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 yani, just, yani, as a, yani, this, being in a box. Don't let nobody put you in a box, my brothers, in the deen, and sisters. Don't let anyone put you in a box. Go out, spread khair, spread Islam, and do not be afraid of the blame of the blamers. Go out and do good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of spreading La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Because we have to be the front runners in khair. So the people know us, the Muslims, they do good. The Muslims, they do good. That's what we're known for. Not being, yani, just closed up in a box and worrying about ourselves. Islam is not just worrying about yourself, rather it's worrying about all of the creation. Naam. So he gave this man that. وَهَذَا مَا وَقَعَ And exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted, this is exactly what happened. He gave this man this wealth. فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ أَتَى قَوْمُهُ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُتَعَجِّبًا He went to his people amazed by the karam, by the, the, the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's what we want the people to be, uh, be amazed by us. We want to do good and spread good and the people will be amazed by us. And they're going to go talk. The people, that's all they do. All they do is talk. And he went to his people and he requested for them and he called them to Islam. He told them to become Muslim. فَإِنَّ الْإِسْلَامِ يَحْدِي إِلَى مَكَارِمِ الْأَخْرَاقِ Because Islam, it calls to the best of manners. ثُمَّ حَلَفَ لَهُمْ بِاللَّهِ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا And he swore by Allah that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He gives a lot. He gives a great amount in charity. مَا يَخَافِ الْفَقْرِ مَعَهُ He's not afraid of poverty. My brothers, don't, we should not be afraid of poverty. Because Allah عز و جل, He tells us if we give, we're going to get. If we give, we're going to give. We shouldn't be afraid of poverty. We should be given and given. And if we give, we have this mind to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's going to come back tenfold. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَعِفَهُ أَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا Who will give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lengthy loan so he can multiply it for him many times. If we have this mind state, this is how we will become rich. This is how our communities will become rich by giving, by helping. Naam. This is the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gave a, ka a, a kafir, mushrik, wealth that's going to make him rich and his people rich. For him to come into Islam and for him to call his people to Islam. And that's exactly what happened. Now. فَأَصْبَحَ الرَّجُلْ بِتِلْكِ الْأَطَايَ دَاعِيَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ And then that man, with him getting that good from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he became a da'i, he became a caller to Islam. 
And then in, in, in another narration, Anas begins to speak about this. It's not what we have in our book. ثُمَّ يُبَيِّنُ أَنَسْ رَضَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَيُخْبِرْ أَنَّ بَعْضَ النَّاسِ كَانَ يَدْخُلُ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ مَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا الدُّنْيَا Then Anas, he said that some people will come into Islam and they don't want anything except dunya. They'll come into Islam, but they don't want anything but dunya. يعني طَمْعًا فِي المال. Just wanting, desiring wealth. فَمَا يَلْبَثُ بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِ إِلَّا يَسِيرًا حَتَّى يَكُونَ إِسْلَامُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ And then he will become Muslim for the sake of getting money, for the sake of dunya. And he said, Anas رضي الله عنه And then he will not be in Islam, practice in Islam except for a little bit until Islam becomes more beloved to him than everything in the dunya. Yeah, and he'll come into Islam just wanting wealth. This is what Anas is explaining. He become a Muslim, but he just wants dunya. But then once he starts to get around the Muslims and start actually yani, practicing Islam, Islam becomes more beloved to him than everything in this dunya. أنه, and the meaning is, أنه يظهر الإسلام أولا للدنيا لا بقصد صحيح بقلبه. He'll yani, show Islam for this the dunya and he won't have a good intention in his heart. ثم لم يلبث إلا قليلا حتى ينشرح صدره بحقيقة الإيمان ويتمكن من قلبه فيكون حين إذن حبه إليه من الدنيا and then he will not be in Islam practice Islam except a little bit until his heart is expanded expanded with the true Iman and it becomes firm in his heart and then it becomes Islam becomes more beloved to him than anything in this dunya alright so this is something يعني. so people who demonize wealth you should not demonize wealth Wealth is something good if it's not, if we're not connected to it and it's not our Lord. Wealth is something that the, the Muslims should have. If anybody has wealth, it should be the Muslims. لا بأس بالغناء لمن التقاء. The Prophet said there's no harm for wealth for the one who is God-fearing. There's no harm for wealth for the one who is God-fearing. And the Prophet praised Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu by saying, ما نفعني مال قد كما نفعني مال Abu Bakr. And no wealth has benefited me like the wealth of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu because he uses wealth for the deen. He uses wealth for Islam and establishing Islam and helping the weak, helping the weak Muslims, helping the weak Muslims and aiding them. Right? He, yani, freed Bilal al Habasha al Habashi. He freed him and 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 six other of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he used his wealth for aiding Islam. So those who demonize wealth, this is a, a misunderstanding in the religion. Rather, it's something beneficial if we have the right mind state and if we have that wealth, we can go and help the people. And this is what the uh, uh, Nasara, the missionaries, they go to the, the poor areas and the poor lands with the wealth and this, they have people to come into Christianity because of it. Right? And that's falsehood, that's batil, that's shirk billah. Right? If the Muslims had this mind state as well, that we go and we help the people, we help those in need for them to come into Islam, you see these people will come into Islam and then they say, this is the deen of truth. So it won't just be tama'an, it won't just stay as just I want the wealth. They practice and they learn about iman, they learn about Islam, they learn the Quran, right? And it becomes the more beloved, beloved to them than anything in the dunya as Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu has said. So I advise my brothers, my sisters to have this mind state, right? And if Allah elevates you so you be able to be of some need, be of some help, go out and be of some help. Be of some need to your people back home. Be of some need to the people here. We are the number one people on the earth that need to be the humanitarians, need to be of those who help the people, Muslim and non-Muslim, right? For the sake of keeping those Muslims firm upon Islam and teaching them religion and yani, encouraging those non-Muslims to come into Al-Islam, La ilaha Allah. And with that intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give us tawfiq. Hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdika. Ashadu ila ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers in the deen. Uh, inshallah, you know, like we said, go over the class inshallah this week. We only have four more ahadith. Or we have three more ahadith. Now we have four more hadith until yani, we go near the end of the book, inshallah. So we don't know how many more lessons we're going to have for this class. But as I mentioned before, this class right here is not dependent upon the previous classes. So every class you get a benefit. For those who came new, and salaam alaikum to my young brothers. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Um, 
my young Afghani brothers. Nah. Um, yani, uh, it's not depending on you being here for the first class that you're going to get the, that you, 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 you're you not going to understand what's going on in the 10th or the 11th class. Every single class has its own benefit, okay? And its own lesson. So inshallah, don't let it deter you that you came later. In, inshallah, continue and uh, you'll get the benefit going on, inshallah. If you just come and come and take a study guide and we'll get you a book as well, inshallah. And um, we'll connect, connect with each other. And for my, my sisters, my brothers and sisters online, listen to me, Allah bless you and reward you for your diligence. You can be doing anything. May Allah reward you for sitting and listening to the class. Remind you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message of Allah. May Allah bless you and aid you and allow you to benefit. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.